You are now listening to or watching the It Takes All Kinds podcast. Yeah, and if you aren't, you can head over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and listen to us now, or head on over to Drib on YouTube and watch the video version as well. And if you'd like to stay up to date on when we're releasing a new episode or any other fun information about the podcast, you can give us a follow on Instagram at It Takes All Kinds Podcast and on Twitter at ITAC Podcast. That's I T A K Podcast. Without saying much else, we hope you enjoy this episode. I don't think anything will ever make me laugh as hard as when you played the old timey music when before the before the beat dropped. Beat drop. Before the beat drop. Well, hello. Uh, 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 well, uh, well, well. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Man, I love. Hello, this is Elon Musk, and you're watching the It Takes All Kinds podcast. Yep. <laughs> he took the words right out of my mouth. I told, wait, I this is the It Takes All Kinds podcast, episode one hundred and ten out of one hundred. Uh, we're going ten. We're we're ten hours over time. We're so. ten for ten. We're yep, ten for ten. So well, I got to poop so bad. Someone call my daddy. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. And uh, so today is Tuesday, April eleventh. You'll be hearing this on Friday, April fourteenth. I don't like me. <laughs> Thanks so much, Bob. I don't. Li- so, what do we got on the docket today, Carson? I don't like that B.J. Novak is an actor. Uh, today was that George Bush? Yeah, George Bush doesn't sound so good. You know who does though? I don't like big B.J. Novak as an actor. George Harrison. Oh, man, we you know we're just kind of taking a chill today, man. We're just gonna do some catching up as we always do. We're gonna talk about Dolly Part Dolly. La- Dolly Lar- Lama. Oh, the Dolly Lama? The Dolly's Lama sucking tongue. Dolly Lamas? I heard Dolly Lama sucking tongue. And to Next, be honest with you, he probably, it wasn't the first time. It wasn't the first time he sucked my tongue. I remember it. Uh, Next Door Drama, as usual, what you listening to? All the hits, baby. Keeping it chill, trying to keep this one to an hour <laughs> because we've been going long. Not that I don't love doing long episodes. It's just I am... You're I mean, tired. I no, I'm just You're busy, tired. man. I just got a lot of shit to do. It's a busy week, which I can talk about in a minute. Um, and it's been a busy week every epi- every time we've done like an hour forty five yeah, a minute yeah, episode, which, which is again, it's fine. It's our, it's it's my uh my personal vent, it's my personal venting session. So well, I just same here. I leave it on Carson to do all the editing. You talk to more people than I do in your day. You don't think I come here to vent? You I don't think right. you don't think you yeah. let me get a turn? I talked to nobody. I sit there today. I got. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm I was kind of reaching might. out to a lot of people today. I saw a lot of people today. I saw a lot of people. Well, look at you. Yeah. Oh, I guess this is your show now. Yeah. So you're sitting over there by yourself. No I went around by myself playing solitaire. Um and playing with the Dalai Lama. I I I. <laughs> <laughs> Flick of the Dalai Lama. Um. And this has been happening recently quite often. This might be a little TMI, so uh, get ready. Uh, since I now predominantly sit in all the gaming day chair. in the gaming chair, which thank you to Razor for that chair. Oh, Gavin's going to, this, this is the gaming chair's debut, actually. He's going to try and cram it in the frame, and it's not really working too well. There you go. Hey, you can see the headrest. There we go. That was worth it. Um, <laughs> And because I now not sit, sure the show could have went on without it, Carson. Right. So Since you kind of sit there all day. Let your I sit all sweat. day now. I used, you know, whenever I was doing the vintage stuff all the time, I was up moving around, running right. around, you throwing got, clothes on my back. I was right. moving more, but now you got I sit. a hoodie tied around your waist, and I'm, you know, and so now since I sit, I've noticed that my bowels don't kick into gear yeah. when I just get up, move from the bed to the chair. Five hours later, get up, and then I'm like, "Hmm, I, why do I not have to take a Shit. dump like I usually do? I'm a morning yeah. dumper. It's it's not like a specific time, but it's usually in the morning. There are people who do have it specific times. I know I'm not one of them. I'm I not just, either. I, I just go. I, know I just go. Not. When, I just oh, go whenever I, I feel like not. it. You're like a. Uh, I'm like a fire hose. Sometimes. Yeah, there you go. I was thinking of 
springtime. Sp- uh, anyways, so I'm like the lights whenever they come on for the holiday time. I'm like the hat. You know, there's like a timer. And just yeah, like but ticks. you're not timed though. <clears throat> so I've been having this issue where the bowels don't get moving, and then I'm like midday. I'm like, man, I'm constipated. Is this what's gonna be on the docket today? <laughs> I already talked about that. It's oh, okay. not much, just Dolly's llamas. That's right. And I was like, and it's so I've just been ha- I've been having constipation recently, and today was I've got it's the worst bout of constipation I've had, and that's pretty much what's going on in my life. That's great, Carson. Con- being constipated. Really, really happy for I'm you. Glad you guys know that now. Did you have a good uh, Easter? No, I was constipated. Okay. Uh, no, I did. I uh, it, it was interesting. I think this is the first year where I was like week of i was like oh easter is this coming weekend yeah and i had to work on saturday and you gave up so much for lent too i gave up so much i gave up pooping yeah yeah really you did i gave up my gaming chair Mm -hmm. i switched it for a wood dinner table chair a wood stool yeah speaking of stool i was con (laughs) uh and so it was just like leading up to it i was just like like the first year that I was just like, does Easter have to happen today? Yeah. Does Easter have to be this weekend? Yeah. It's been so busy recently. Yeah, because Easter used like, to have meaning. <laughs> it really used right. to used to mean a lot more back in the day. It's true when we were youngins. Yeah. Hunting it, brown it, eggs yeah. out in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was dog poop. Speaking of. That was, was my poop. <laughs> <laughs> that was my poop that I needed to get out. Yep. Uh, no, you're right. It did used to have more of a meaning than it does now. <laughs> for more reasons than one. For more reasons than one, praise. And so I, I, like, I didn't think much about it. Right. And then it came, and then I was like, I don't know. It was just like it just kind of happened. We had breakfast at my parents' house, which I. It was funny because I suggested to my mom. I was like, Hey, are we gonna do breakfast why don't we do it like really early like seven or eight in the morning seven eight i I gotta go i gotta go do stuff i gotta catch the easter bunny (laughs) no i wanted it to be as late as possible because i was i worked until uh i didn't get home until midnight 30 on saturday or i guess it'd be sunday morning Mm. and so it was funny because i suggested that she's like yeah we'll see and then saturday night my mom's like how does brunch down no she was like uh like come over at this time tomorrow and i was like or can you come over tomorrow? And I was like, oh, I didn't get an invite or something like that. And then she was like apologizing for it. And I was like, I don't, I don't care. I have nothing going on yeah. tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, so did that. And then later in the day, we went to, uh, we got together with my mom's side of the family out in the country and did dinner there. And that was kind of it. Yeah. It was just kind of like, there it was. There it went. Yeah. I heard you guys didn't do anything. Because, well, let me tell you another thing I did. Okay, yeah. Let me keep talking. Uh, while I was at my parents' house, Spencer called me, uh-huh. and he was like, hey, do you want to come work out at the shed coming mm-hmm. soon? TM, trademark, T- pen- trademark pending, pending, patent pending. Appendix. And Sean was there, your brother. And they were like, come over. And I was like, they were like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm having breakfast with my family. And they're like... Oh yeah, it's Easter. <laughs> they both said that. Like they both legitimately were like, "Oh yeah, that's today." And I was like, "Yeah." So I went over and worked out with them, which was fun. Got to pump in before you went over Got to the country. In. Speaking of pumps, Gavin, I'm gonna keep talking now. Uh, they have a belt that um, Sean may or may not have stolen, <laughs> which I won't get into. Well, but to I be fair, to bring he did up. have his entire bag stolen from him. So. That's true. So he can take some. You know, he's eye a, for an eye. He's a necrophiliac. And, That's not uh, what that is. And so, yeah, I think it is. <laughs> and so, <laughs> he's, no, he's a necrophilic. He likes to steal stuff. Right? <laughs> you ever, yeah, I've heard that people who like stealing are necromancers. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, so he has this belt for working out mm-hmm. and keeps it, your back straight. It's got, you don't a, have any problems with that. Oh, not at all. Well, I tried to put the belt on and it was like, there was like this much space that <laughs> I couldn't even get it to buckle. Like there was that much room b- between the buckle and the, and the, yeah. the other thing. It's not intended but, for BMI is over 25. No, God, no. And God knows I'm over that. Uh, I don't even know what my BMI is and I'd be I'll calculate it for you real quick. All right. That'd be great to share on the show. <laughs> and I would 
that wouldn't be embarrassing to me at all. But the belt has a name on it, not uh-huh. a person's name, but it's like the brand of the belt. Uh-huh. And it's called Pump Chasers. <laughs> <laughs> and that made me laugh really hard. Wasn't that uh I was that, a show yeah. on the Weather Channel. Yeah, I was going to say. They went around chasing pumps. <laughs> uh, speaking of pumps. Speaking of pumps. Uh, speaking of pumps, actually, Gavin. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, shout out friend of the show, DJ Doug Pound. Shout out to the friend of the show, Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama. Shout out you got to pump in. Actually, shout out to the friend of the show, DJ Doug Pound, uh, because him and Brent on their podcast, The Poundcast, go check it out. We're plugging them. You're going to wait for the millions of viewers coming over to your show because of that. Uh, they did a really funny bit where for some reason, I don't even know how to really do the bit justice, but Brent was acting like there he was talking on the phone or something or talking to somebody. He, he kept bringing up pumps. He was like, yeah. And then she asked me if I wanted uh, one pump. And I was like, no, I want three pumps. And he just like, <laughs> without like, n- like it wasn't talking about yeah. Starbucks or anything. He just kept talking about pumps. pumps. And so they just kept doing bits back and forth talking about pumps, and it made me laugh really hard. And I just wanted so we got to it, shout them we out. got it, we got it, the very we got the very same podcast over here. Pretty much, dude. Just um, I, it was it, it just a weird connection that pump chasers happened to be the name. Rainbow of the belt. connection. Just a little bit of a rainbow connection. <laughs> <laughs> Yoda. Rainbow connection. It has. Uh, what do you got going on, Gavin? Huh? Are you doing anything, or do you want me to just keep talking? <laughs> No, why don't we keep going with what you got to say? Actually, speaking well, of... No, actually, we do... We're going to do your half of the show. <laughs> we're going to do my half of the show. All right, we got about... So, I'm not going to say anything. 17 more minutes left okay. in my part. Cool. No, what's up, man? How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. I want to just read what you put down in here, and I'm going to do it with these two fingers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You said you put down on the dock. It must have been late last night or yeah, today. Yeah, it was. It was like... Two and three in the morning. And can I read it verbatim? Is that yeah. okay? Yeah. You said life has a new meaning. Has a sorry, let me start that over. Life has a meaning again. Very fired up right now. Yeah. Let's hear. I want to know. I want to well, know everything. It's the reason is because, well, I don't have, uh say whatever. I don't know how else to this. Oh shit, he's gonna start crying. Uh, <laughs> no, uh no, it, it's like with the weather and everything, uh, and it's it's been really nice to it been. to uh, it's been really nice out, um, yes. and it's kind of raised my mood a little bit. Yeah. Um, <coughs> um. Yeah. So. Uh, nephro- so we learned about like fluid balance and like acid based stuff and like mm-hmm. if you're, if you're like hypernatremic you have too much sodium in your blood or you're hyponatremic you don't have enough sodium in your blood or if you're like hypovolemic where you're you don't have a lot of volume so like you're you look pale you're cold you know you got bad blood pressure and you're hypervolemic you got high blood pressure you know high heart rate those kinds of things are this, treated this usually this is what's got you fired up yes <laughs> okay I'm getting there. <laughs> so those kinds of things are treated with sa- with like saline yeah. or dextrose. And those are things I put my drugs into whenever I work in the IV room. Mm-hmm. So I'm working in the IV room and I'm and now I know why we put certain drugs in to certain bags. Oh. For example, uh, a diuretic known as uh, bumetanide gets put into D5, 100 mils. Now, guys at home, make sure you're writing this down. Yeah. Right. And only the guys. Yeah. So... If you're if you're dex if if you give someone dextrose, the body is just going to turn. It's just sugar. It's sugar water. Okay. Your body right. is just going to change. It's just going to digest that sugar, and then all you're left with is water. So right. it's like basically a hundred percent free water. Um, and if you're given a drug in water, that means that the drug's probably you know going to be used by the body very effectively. Mm-hmm. If you give drugs intravenously, which is ma- most of the drugs that I make. You have 100% bioavailability, which means which that is, it's, which means that it's going to be used by the body 100%. All of it's going to be used by the body, and none of it's going to be left behind in like digestion or anything like that. And intravenous means that it goes right into your, your veins. <laughs> no. Oh. No, it's right into your veins. I thought it was spelled intravenous. Anyway, so um, so anyway, there's 
a lot of fluids that we're talking about and I know what they look like. I know like now I'm starting to learn like why they are, you know, packaged a certain way, such as like, uh, you know, potassium chloride only having 20 mil equivalents or 40 mil equivalents. The body can only handle a certain amount, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, mil equivalents? Yes. Mil equivalents. M E Q. What does that even mean? You know, Carson, no, I'm serious. Uh, no, I, I, no, you know, Carson, I don't know. I don't, oh, okay. I don't remember. Oh, okay. The liquid, the liquid guy over yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember, honestly, but, um, yeah. So hearing those things, uh, and like being able to reinforce them at work is really interesting. And like, it's really nice feeling to, you know, know what I'm doing, like, <laughs> and like understand it to like a, why I'm doing it kind of thing, uh, or why I'm doing it down to like that type of like specifics of like why this drug is being put into this bag kind of thing. Right. Whereas before uh, you were just where, like, I was like, this drug goes I'm in this bag. Doing what they told uh, me to yeah, do. yeah. And now it's like, Oh, this makes a lot more sense. And it's, it's coming together. Uh, some medical tests re- report results in mill equivalents per liter. An equivalent is the amount of substance that will react with a certain number of hydrogen ions. A mill equivalent is one thousandth of an, of an equivalent. What? <laughs> Yeah. Does that make sense? Not, I mean, not really, but like it's, there's, th- I think what they're saying there is that like a mill equivalent is smaller than an equivalent. I thought it And it's like, I guess it's a measurement. It's a type of measurement. I learned this like a year and a half ago. Like that type of stuff was like pharmacy calculations. So like, and that even then went over my head whenever I was working at the hospital. So like I was, and like mill osmoles and stuff like that. Anyway, um, yeah. that's, that's a whole different measuring system. And it's basically to test how much fluid is being used how much how much the fluid has in there and like how much oh and like the whole body like for example the normal uh sodium levels in the body are 135 mill equivalents per liter to 145 mill equivalents per liter okay so there's like a range there and if it falls out then you're hypo hypo on the low end low hyper too much hyper you Mm -hmm. know if you're hyperactive you know you're hyper in general like how i am when i drink too much mountain yeah exactly you're hyped up on something yeah um those kind of things but it's finally starting to make sense to me and then on top of that um in in lab uh in our skills lab that we have which is a three-hour course uh taken uh it's really interesting uh, because we're actually applying some of the things that we learn. Uh, like we work on patient cases, made up patient cases, not real ones. I mean, they probably honestly are real. They just changed the name, like, right. to be honest with you. But, uh, but yeah, very similar, uh, you know, <laughs> and we have to come up with like a diagnosis, what we're going to treat them with, how, like what volume we treat them with and like how uh, quickly we put in that volume, that kind of thing. Um, I think that that is, that is very fulfilling because now I know like whenever someone's talking about like, you know how fast they're putting in a drug on someone it's very interesting to listen to and now i know what they're talking about and i can kind of decipher what they're what they mean by certain things um right now eventually i'll probably know but um that kind of thing is is very nice and fulfilling to have in my life and uh especially working in the hospital but um they had a so i worked in the IV room 2 to 10 30 saturday and sunday and then worked in the IV room last night 5 to 10 30 um and before I, uh, I work, I have skills lab on Mondays from like one to four, basically. And, uh, at the beginning of the lab, uh, we went up to the, uh, IV room that we have at our school and put, um, like three mils, three milliliters of sodium chloride into a sodium chloride bag, just like practice it. And I felt like an expert. You know fucking I mean? aced it. Yeah, I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm a fucking awesome guy. But you it was like funny because like I blindfold me. It was funny because there was a no offense to this, no offense to the Appy student. He was really mm-hmm. nice. Um, Appy student is a, someone who's on their last years. It's like the applied mm-hmm. um, pharmacy uh, uh, experience. It's like your last year of pharmacy school. You go around, um, you go around like in six or eight week rotations for a year, and then you graduate. <laughs> Right. Uh, so you're not ever in class. You're like hanging out with like a preceptor all day. And, hanging out with the underclassmen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that's not quite it. Uh, and so one of this guy was on his appy rotation for education, and he was uh, explaining, you know, how to how to do um, how to how to use it correctly. And I raised my hand and said, like, you know, I like before we went in, someone the professor was like, hey, if you if you have any experience, you know, raise your hand. So we raised our hand, and I went in there, and she was like. She was like, if anybody has any questions, like you should probably go to them. I haven't been in an IV room forever. So, mm. um, 
so it was funny because I was getting like micromanaged on how I do it. Like it, the guy, no offense to him, I, he was just trying to be helpful, but it was like I I wanted to turn around and be like, yeah, I, I know what I'm doing. Like I got this. Yeah, buddy. yeah. Because like I I was you you have to put it in at forty. You have to put the needle into the vial at like forty five degrees, and you have to tilt it up and you know shoot air into it. Um, but I was like in the process of doing it. And also these hoods are really like these IV hoods mm -hmm. are very low. So like I'm bending over. I'm already bending over. Right. I'm way low. I'm super low. And uh, and like it's so annoying to to be in there for so long. And I was like, I just kind of itching to go. Like, I'm like, I, I'm already I've been I was in this. I was in a similar room all weekend and i now i have to go back and do it whenever i go to work tonight right oh i kind of want to get i'm like i gotta get it i know what i'm doing and uh i don't know why i did this but you're not supposed to but you're supposed to you know wipe you know wipe the vial and then wipe this wipe the medication pour on the bag and i'm an impatient bastard and i take and i'm you know you know i'm just very impatient and oh, I, I was like waving my hand to like dry off the alcohol the hood wasn't on, so I was like, it doesn't matter. Like, no one's going to, you know, dock me points or anything on this. Mm -hmm. And we weren't graded, but it was like, I, I would imagine no one's going to dock me points on this. And then he comes up and he's like, oh, actually, that's my pet peeve. He, I, I, he's like, just, you got to be patient with it. In my head, I'm, and I was like, I don't, I'm like, I don't know why the fuck I did that, but I, I didn't say it out loud, but I was like, why the fuck did I do that? Right. Like, this is not the time to, like, do the shit that I never do. Yeah, but. It was, it was kind of like, I, I wanted to be like, yeah, I, yep. Yeah. Yep, I know. Yep, same here. Yep, my pet peeve. Yep, is doing mine this too. All weekend and then yeah. having to do it again at school. At, at school, so um, but I, I just went. I unfortunately probably made it look like I didn't know what I was doing because I kept looking back in the instructions to follow it exactly because I was like, I don't want to like do something wrong. So, well, they might do it different than how you do it. And yeah, you, yeah, you exactly. I'm, I don't want to do something different or you know get a learn a bad habit from work or whatever. But right. Um, yeah, so that was very fulfilling. So you're, uh, you're yeah. being able to apply things yes. to what you're doing. Yes. And it's like, yeah, it's snapping together. It's right. all coming into place. I always, um, I always like that feeling when you're like, oh, this is actually, yeah. I'm using this now. Yeah, and That's it was the nice. same thing we did. Uh, we had, Before we went into the IV room, we had to do calculations uh, to, you know, this person's taking this much drug, how much, and it's it's in this concentration in the bag, how much drug should we give them? Or like how much of the bag should we give them? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. We were doing calculations before we went in there, so that was also nice to know that like I know how to do that. Right. Interesting. So um, got nice. got a little, got some plans. Uh, you know, I'm trying to, I need to apply for a couple of leadership positions in, in, some, uh, in some clubs. Um, I'm not going to apply like five or six, but it was like, you know, I want to get like at least on a board, on like a board for one of the pharmacy clubs. And now are we talking like DJ clubs or golf clubs? Uh, we're talking like organization, like club. Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah. Like a, like, yeah. Like Minecraft builders club or. Yeah. Yeah. Why would they need a pharmacist? Anyway, so that's that's great, man. That's I awesome. worked on Easter. My parents brought me some uh, mashed potatoes, roast beef. So your family did get together? No. Oh. I was at work. But so you don't even know what they? I did. don't know what they did. Cause Sean was like, I was like, all right, you guys. Maybe doing they anything? just. She probably just cooked a roast. That could be. Cause Sean was like, no, we're not doing anything. Yeah, cause we, <laughs> cause, cause like, usually we would go over to our grandparents or something. That's what I thought. Like that. So, um, I think she said she was fine. At, at, uh, but anyway, so um, yeah, so my parents were like, "Hey, we're gonna bring you some roast beef." Uh, so they bring you a basket full of eggs. No, uh, they brought me some roast beef, corn, green beans, mashed potatoes, uh, and it was really good. Nice. So I, uh, it was really nice. I didn't have to pay for dinner or anything like that. There you go. That's um, always a plus. Yeah, and I, I found out someone from our high school works at the hospital I work at, <laughs> and I had no clue. I had no clue. Oh. I saw her in the lunchroom, and I was, and I was like, "Do you work here?" <laughs> like I, not even, like not even like as a joke, bro. I was like, I saw her. I'm like, I've never seen you before. Like, do you work here? And she's like, Yeah, I'm a trial nurse up on the fourth floor or whatever. Or you know, I'm a you know, I'm a trial nurse or something like that. I don't yes. remember where it was, but um, yeah, I was like, I had no idea. That's very, cool. Yeah, it was very very cool. I had no idea. Nice. I expect her to be a nurse. She's not a mean person. She's just I a very caring. Expected them to do yeah, that. Yeah, no, she's just a very you know caring, loving person, and I, it seems like something she would do. I could never do that. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm not a caring or a loving person. You're the least sympathetic bastard I know. I'd be a hard, I'd be a hard ass nurse. Yeah. You like, you're, oh, you want get more your pills? ass out of bed. Oh, did you hurt? Oh, 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 oh you don't want your. Oh, oh. Hey, if you don't, 
If you don't get out of bed, you're never getting your pills. <laughs> <laughs> you get out of bed and I'll give you a shot of morphine then. But get the fuck, fuck out up. of it. And I'm not going to do it for you. Oh, you shit yourself? Clean it up. <laughs> not my throw, job. Throw a, ra- a wet rag at them. There you go. Figure it out. You did it. This is the mess you made. That's Carson as a nurse. Talking to a uh, six-year-old. <laughs> this is the mess you made. Figure it Clean out. Clean it up. Clean up on an aisle. Problem. Clean up on aisle, you. Clean up on my... Oh, I <laughs> get over the loudspeaker. Oh, we, did we got to clean up in this room. Dude, shit himself. Timmy's going to clean it up. He shit himself again. God damn it, Theodore. Bastards. That's why I can't work in, yeah. that's why I can't work in a hospital. That's why. Oh, that's why I can't work in a hospital. You got you got like banned from all the hospitals in the area because of your neck surgery. Yeah, they were like this They're, guy's. This guy, he's gonna get blacklisted. They're like he just keeps coming. He never back. pays his bills. <laughs> <laughs> he never pays his taxes. And then he just keeps coming back. I don't pay my hospital taxes. Did you pay, did you guys pay your hospital taxes here? Did you guys pay? Did you pay it? <laughs> Everybody's got to pay. You it. don't pay your taxes. Dude, it's, like, it's a lot of money, too. It's like $6,000. I get it straight from the hospital. <laughs> they it give says, it to me. It says hospital tax. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I guess sure. I pay it every yeah. year. So. And it's direct deposit, too. They, they just wire it. Somehow they pull it just from my account. <laughs> even, I don't even like send they, them a They check text me stuff all the time. They say, your yeah. account has been compromised. Dude, speaking of, actually, um, I keep getting, like, for the past month, at, like, all hours of the night, yeah. and I do mean that quite literally. Yeah. I've been getting texts from like Amazon service messages. Yes, yeah, I get those too. And net your Netflix account yeah. has been closed, yeah. Yeah. and I delete like them the, all. I wish yeah, I could pull up the, one. Uh, the it's so funny because like the the English isn't good on it too. The punctuation isn't right, and it's also from like as you yeah, it's yeah, like a it's cra- at it's system like, message dot com. It'll either or something be like, like five numbers, or it'll be like a whole slew of like things. A, a, like, protective password or something like that so. but like dude like 3 a.m yeah. 2 a.m and i'm yeah. up then so i click the links and i put in my information and i give them I'm, my I'm give like, them whatever I, they I'm, need yeah i'm like i don't want to i don't want my co- i don't want my account i don't want to lose my account i don't want to lose my netflix it's account the, and it's also the same thing that if, i don't pay for <laughs> it's also the same thing with uh with uh like your uh yeah i lost my train of thought <laughs> it's like the same thing with your um yeah my I, I, something kind of related to that that has happened to my my grandma before, and she doesn't fall for it. Okay, she's smart, so don't get any don't get any fucking don't get any funny thoughts. <clears throat> no, she actually is. She's fucking sharp as a tack. Um, I'll say, I'll say. Uh, she's like years and years ago has gotten two different calls from a random number. And one of them, she calls them and, back, I mean, and they call them back, and they call, and it's like a real person that, like, somehow she said that it sounded like my cousin, mm-hmm. and they said my cousin's name, yeah, sounded exactly like her, yeah, and was like, "I'm in Mexico, I'm trapped, and I need you to send me money," yeah, yeah, and like sounds exactly like them, and then like a couple years later, another one using a different cousin's name sounded exactly like him this time. And it was like a similar situation. Oh, I, you know, I'm in the hospital. I need money. Send it over. That's fucking crazy. Like I I hear the ones where it's like, you know, you know, and not to be not being racist or stereotypes, but like an Indian guy or a a foreign person being like, Oh, your computer is hacked, you know, or, Oh, you you need to send me money for it. Or like very like, unspecific vague yeah. asks but like the specific creepy like thing i never Prince heard that emails and stuff like that but yeah like th- yeah again the the non-vague ones but yeah. like that's so i don't even yeah that, how does that, that even ha- that's i don't know but that's they've uh they've worked uh they've worked their way up to spoofing people's like um caller id um right. so it makes it look like you know my brother is calling me or my sister's right. calling me and mind you this was like maybe even the first one was like 10 years ago yeah like before ai voice tech like now i could be like well ai yeah. voice yeah you know 11 lab is uh, just get a recording of my get five voice seconds of your to. brother's or your uh, cousin's voice right which you know, i don't even know it, it it almost sounds like someone on the inside doing it maybe your cousin was in on it maybe he actually was trapped in mexico well i never asked <laughs> Maybe we and we haven't seen that cousin anymore, so yeah. good good have oh, been. Well. Good riddance, I guess. Good riddance. So um, so what else? We well, let's well let's 
Um. Whoa, slow your roll there. Let's um. Let, let, let let's um. Uh, I was debating. Uh, no. Nah, um. Well, I'll bring it up real. Well, uh, maybe. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, well. Uh. Um. I've been working on a lot of stuff for office hours. That's honestly been uh, a lot of my occupy time, which is great. Uh, if you guys didn't see it yet, uh, we released an an ad compilation, a fake ad compilation of from the past couple of years called admin and shout out Daniel K. He made a, uh, a really awesome intro mimicking the Mad Men intro with mm-hmm. Doug, Vic and Tim in it. And so I put that all together besides the intro. I, I edited everything else. And so that came out and then it's not public as of right now, but as when this comes out, the episode will have already been live, but um, big announcement. It's it's like it is a big announcement at the same time like nothing's really changing yeah. but like that's why it's funny is because it's like it's the oh, biggest announcement since Office it, Hours Live right it's a big announcement because it's like an internal it's Joke. a big internal change yeah. but external it doesn't you know it'll be like oh it just looks better but yeah there it is the gay ball exactly we're 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 switching we're getting off of Tim's channel we're no longer being a nepo baby of of a podcast <laughs> and we've got our own channel wow. Which uh, I think is a little scary for some of us, just thinking about like how the views are going to translate, and because it's been on Tim's channel. Well, first it was on like Tim's Facebook, and then it was just like a Skype thing, and then since 2020, it's been on Tim's channel, and so moving off it is kind of a scary step, and you know, gonna have to rebuild a following on the new channel, but yada yada. So that's gonna happen. Yeah, I feel like it'll be a more loyal fan base too. I you know, think it will. I think th- you're gonna weed out all the people that maybe right. You know, just there for whatever reason, and they comment, you know, bullshit things. Well, yeah, exactly. It'll take away the. Uh, eh, I probably won't say that, but it, just hateful because comments. I don't want to. Yeah, hateful comments about like specific things that it's like. Yeah, that doesn't five pertain. five years ago, shit. Yeah, that doesn't these, pertain like, to what's right wing creeps are still yeah. hanging on to for no reason. Um, the reason I'm not saying it is just because I don't, I don't, if someone's peddling lies, I don't, I don't need somebody to, I don't, yeah, I don't want to add fuel to the fire of stupid, pointless stuff. Um, but yeah, I think it's one of those things where it's like, at first it's going to be kind of a slow burn, but I think like over time it will be the better move for the algorithms and what have you. But so that's happening. And we're also announcing this thing called office hours plus. Uh, which will be, it's literally just a way for us to uh, call the the full episode, the full two-hour show. Um, and if you haven't seen it, I'm assuming it will have come out. It's As of right now, it's not completely done, but the plan is to have it done, and I'm assuming show it during the episode on Thursday, uh, is the, the Office Hours Plus announcement video edited right. by yours truly. Um and mimicked in the style of an Apple keynote and uh, I don't know what it'll what it'll look like in the final product but as of right now it's really funny Gavin and I watched the the cut that I did and I had to yesterday. sign an NDA and everything so that's why I'm not saying anything he can't talk about it even though I am uh but yeah so if you haven't seen that go watch that I'm assuming it's out uh assuming nothing drastically changes in the next day or two. Um, but yeah, so working, working hard on working hard on that. But I just want to talk about that because I haven't. I've been doing so much office hour stuff, and I haven't really even feel like I haven't even talked about him for a while. It, it was funny. I was thinking back on it, like, wow, and it was I like, well, I was just like, man, whenever I like even just started the internship, like I was wanting to talk about it all the time. I mean, I still do because I love it. Yeah, of course. But like now, it's become like. You know, it's like work. It's like I don't want to talk about it all the time, right. but I love talking about it because it's you know work something I love. But uh, but yeah, I feel like I haven't brought it up in a while, and I just wanted to bring it up, Gavin. So, what do you think about Dolly Part Dolly Lama? So, I didn't know that like these little like toys were like a big thing, like these little Dolly Lamas. You know, like they're because I, I I mean. You know, I'm on TikTok a lot, so I figure I'd see some, maybe, right. you know, like people think TikTok's are for kids, you know, TikTok's for kids or whatever. And right. I figure maybe I'd see something about these dollies. Well, because you watch so like much kids' content. Yeah. Yep. 
And it's I see like I remembered them when I was a kid. I remember right. the Dalai Lamas. Yeah. When I was a kid, uh, because I think I've brought it up on the show before, but uh, for some reason I had Polly Pockets when oh, I was a kid. Oh yeah. And so like the the Dalai Lama was like kind of like an uh, an expansion pack. Right. It was like almost like a DLC, but yeah. in real life. <laughs> And right, it was like a card expansion pack for like yeah, Magic yeah, yeah. the Gathering or something. Like but that. it's so, but it was like the Polly Pocket Dalai Lama. But you can buy like different <laughs> Dolly Dalai Lamas. There were different colors, shapes, sizes. Yeah, like Cabbage Patch breeds. Kids had a Dalai Lama. Lama. Yeah, Furbies even had a Dalai Lama back in where the they 90s. rode on it. They rode on it. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and it was like it had a Furby face, but it was a llama. Oh, okay, yeah, and that's really cool. Beanie Babies had a yeah. Dalai Lama, of course. Uh, uh, but Power, Power Rangers at a dollar. The Lama. weirdest thing, though, is that like they said, um, this news report came out that like one of these. Mm. Are they being canceled? I heard. Well, I mean, I, I'm not gonna ask. I know they're being canceled. Yeah. So um, it's like potato head. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's what we have to Cut the prick now. off my potato head. <laughs> I gotta pull it out. Uh, I heard that in a while. No, it's weird because you wouldn't expect a toy to say something like this, but this, this Dalai Lama said, suck my tongue to like this, like I just took a pliers and I cut the prick off my Mr. Potato head. This like, I, it must, I didn't been, even know they could talk like yeah. back in our day, the Dalai Lama yeah, didn't, didn't talk. talk. Yeah. And like it, even the Furbies didn't really like the Dalai Lama Furbies didn't talk. <laughs> there might've been like a pull string Dalai Lama that talked, but I don't even really remember, but yeah, it's. I mean, so what? So what's the story of what happened? I mean, to share it with the people. Well, that's what I'm trying know. to figure out how old the kid was, just because I think <coughs> it was like an eight or nine year old. Yeah, real weird. Uh, stuff. It was weird, just because like. But you'd expect it because it's a kid's toy. Yeah. That the seven year old would right, have it. Right. But you would not expect it to say suck, suck my, my tongue. tongue. But I guess it must have been. You know, it just they sent the toy back to the factory and they they uh, they they euthanized the Dalai oh. Lama. Well. Yeah. It's a real shame. Yeah, you know, it sounds like a you know like a Buzz Lightyear, like a almost like a Chucky story. Yeah, you ever seen the Chucky movie yeah. where it's like exactly the toy gets possessed and they start a family. You remember that part <laughs> in the in um in the bride or I think it was the bride of Chucky where he's like suck my tongue. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah, uh huh. Really sounds good. Like the same thing. Iconic yeah. line from that movie too. What's that? I- iconic line. Iconic from that. line. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. I just really I'm I'm curious to know which version of the dalai lama um said that yeah Again, i mean it's i'm not around it kids. says something about like a tibetan like uh brand uh dalai lama i also i was reading something on twitter and it was like it said that the dalai lama endorsed uh the nexium cult leader <laughs> did you see that no i did not that's crazy yeah, and then I've yeah, and then they were that. saying stuff about Tibet that he like wants people to suck his tongue. Yeah, the Dalai Lama. He like the, you know, the you little gen- toy. Are you gender? Sorry, the toy. The toy. They, it wanted to suck its tongue. Did you have a Dalai Lama when you were a kid? That was a boy. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's different. You know, yeah. I. Uh, it's actually. Did funny you only have girl Dalai Lamas? Oh, Polly. Yeah, the Polly Pocket Dalai Lama. Oh, okay. Polly Dalai Lama. <laughs> Polly Dolly Dolly. Polly. It's actually funny because, so this happened, I forgot what day it was, but it was before Easter, and it uh-huh. was weird because I, my uh, my cousins have kids, so they're my grand cousins. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that works, right? <laughs> they're your second cousins then. So my grand cousins yeah. are kids, and uh, two of their kids actually got a Dalai Lama For in their Easter basket. Yeah. And it had bunny ears on it, too. Yeah. It was a bunny... It was an Easter version of the Dalai Lama. Lama. Right. And then there was one that was like, it it was like crucified. Like the Dalai Lama was like crucified. (laughs) But it was Easter themed, so it was okay, I guess. I don't know. It was pastel colors and everything. Yeah, pastel. Um, But I've never heard of a toy wanting to suck its tongue, so. I don't even understand how that works because like the Dalai Lamas (laughs) I've seen are small. Yeah, and they don't, and their mouth doesn't move like that. No, I mean that's the only I one mean, that would would have been the Furby. I mean, can, can you even imagine how small uh, Furbies have tongues, right? Yeah, no, that's what I mean. And I mean, like, could you imagine sucking that little thing? That's like a no. chiclet. That's like sucking a chiclet, <laughs> right? You can't suck a chiclet. You can't do that. I've tried. So that's what's in the world today. Is those watch out for those 
Um, I, llamas. Just, I just can't believe he endorsed the Nexium Colt guy. He, I said he too. I don't know why I keep saying that. Um, Gavin, next door drama. Carson, I, I. Uh oh. What's up? Oh shit, dude. Is it not? What did it, did it just say something again? Did you know that there was a guy in the world? The Nexium cult member? Cult leader? Sorry. No. The, um, this, I. You can spit it out. I guess this guy is like pretending to be a Dalai Lama. <laughs> like he's like wearing a costume or something? I mean, I guess, but. It's not even It October. says that he's like a, like a. What does this guy look like? It's like an eighty-seven-year-old man, like a Buddhist priest. Okay. And now I'm not talking Judas priest. I'm talking Buddhist priest. <laughs> Cause I was gonna say I do love Judas priest. Yeah. Breaking the law. You know. What's the guy's Living name? Living after midnight. What's the singer's name? Pat Benatar. No, that's not no, it. No, that's not it. I can't. Uh, but name. anyway, so. Oh, Judas priest. That's yeah, his Judas name. priest. Yeah, Buddhist Buddhist priest. <laughs> <laughs> Sucking no, the but, tongue, yeah. sucking the tongue. Um, I guess I mean, I there's a video that is uh like there's a video that's out of this of this guy Dalai Lama, the Dalai the toy? Lama. No, a guy. His his ti- his official title is Dalai Lama. Dalai so Lama. if he's 87, does that mean he maybe made the toys? Like he's like a a Judas Buddhist Santa Claus. He's a Judas Santa Claus. Yeah. Um, actually, if you look this up, if you look up Dalai Lama sucking tongue. You'll see what I'm looking at here. I'm typing it up. The Dalai, 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 Dalai Lama apologizes for asking a young boy to suck his tongue. Yeah. I think we just misconstrued this, dude. I'm so sorry. Well, does, so does that mean that the toy also asked it? Because I'm, I'm, I saw yeah, reports that the yeah, toy I'm was canceled. So confused. Well, we're gonna have to figure well, this we'll out. have to do a follow up on this. Hmm. The principal leader of the yellow hat. Sure. Principal leader. So he's also a principal? Oh, well, no wonder it's seven-year-old. He's probably well, he's like a principal of an elementary school or yeah, something. Yeah, and like he's... Huh. Huh. Hold on. Really um, weird. I'm just checking something, that's all. Uh, Buddhist priest. Hmm. Did did Dalai Lama endorse Nexium in 2018? Oh yeah, that is about the toy. Huh. Anyways, that's weird. That's I weird. Don't know. No, I don't know why. I, I don't know why that. somebody would be named after a toy. Yeah. Who let that happen? So moving on. Apparently, Judas Priest did. Yeah. Next door drama, folks. Every single week. We go to the infamous next door website, the blog posting website. You know and love the next, the next, the best, bo- the best, the best, 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 bre- the blog posting app, uh-huh. as well as a yeah, website where people in your neighborhood can spew off their hate or love or distrust for restaurants. Usually, <laughs> seems to be the way it goes. Um, in your neighborhood, which is like a certain do model. or die for the restaurants, guys. Exactly, do or diaper. Um, do it in your diaper if you're going to do it. It's where people can, it's a certain mile radius can post whatever. So what we do is every week we take a blog entry. We script out the entry in the comments, reenact it as a dramatic reading. And it goes a little like this. So this week's next door drama is titled, Don't Honk at the Bus. I will be playing the character of Tracy, who has a problem. Gavin's going to be playing two characters. So, Gavin, you need to make sure you switch up your voice, all right? Okay. To, to, so the fans don't get confused. Uh-huh. Uh, you'll be playing Sal, who's a God-fearing man, of course, as okay. most of these people are. And you'll be playing Barb, who's very cynical, but also probably a libertarian, which I think you'll understand pretty quickly. So, without saying much else, I am going to hit the Next Door Drama intro song, and we are going to get... Right in to it. Dalai 
This week on Next Door Drama. I need help understanding why anyone would honk at the school bus in the morning. On multiple mornings, people have honked at the school bus while our preschooler is getting on. I don't know if people think I'm just out there to chit chit chatting with the bus driver and want to speed things along or what. But that is not what is happening. The bus aide is buckling the kids up and safely getting back to her seat. As soon as the aide sits down, they drive on. Yes. This process sometimes takes a few minutes, but honking won't speed anything up. What am I missing? Why would people honk? While I can't imagine that I would ever honk at a school bus, I would say that I was not aware that all these things happen on a school bus these days. I had no idea they even had seatbelts in buses now. It was a point of contention when my children first went to school. My daughter was so short she couldn't see out the window. (laughs) Now that seems humorous, but then it seemed serious to me. God bless all school bus drivers for caring for our kids. I've only seen seatbelts on buses for preschoolers, but I think they should be available on all buses. What happens when the bus is on fire and all the students are strapped in? I'm not sure how things work with preschoolers. I just ate it with a Head Start field trip once and saw them being used. There were a certain number of staff on the bus as well, a certain ratio of adults to children. The adults helped with securing the seatbelts when the children boarded and releasing them when we arrived at the destination. So I believe they would do the same in an emergency situation. If seatbelts were available for older children, I would assume the children were... I I would assume the children would be capable of removing the seatbelts themselves in an emergency situation and instructed in how to do so. Not in a panic situation. A bus can become engulfed in flames pretty quickly or filled with smoke. Buses are designed to compartmentalize the riders for safety without seatbelts. What happens when your car is on fire and all your passengers are belted in? Or do you not believe in seatbelts at all? I was a school bus driver for 31 years. It's not feasible for one driver to unbuckle multiple students with a cloud of black smoke engulfing the inside of a bus. You know, I begin to wonder, why do we even need driver's licenses? Ah, oh, we don't need them. It's our right to drive a car. God built this car for me to drive. Well, yeah. And I don't want to wear a goddamn seatbelt either. No, why, why would you need to? God will protect us. Well, I'm a good driver, so. I'm a good driver. I don't need it. I don't uh, even need a license or anything. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Just because I got it revoked doesn't mean anything. <laughs> It's so weird these people got so fired up. I like she created this fake situation of a fire bus catching fire. And just so like Did in her, her bus own catch on way. fire? I, I feel would like her bus had to have caught on fire or something I like that. I really hope not, because that's a horrifying thing that happened. Yeah, you have a like, bus full of kids catch on fire and you and they just don't do anything. Well, they got seatbelts on. They can't take it off themselves. Oh god no. No. When I was a kid I was never able to get my seatbelt off. Never. <laughs> like never able to get I was off. always on I was stuck in a car once for three days Because I could not get the seatbelt off My mom would it was go July. to the grocery store It was hot My mom would roll up the windows Go to the grocery store 
and just leave me there in like a like a hundred degree heat. It was awesome. No AC on. No AC or anything. It was just windows said, all the way up. She said, "I'm not wasting gas money." Yeah. She said, "I'm not gonna. I can't afford that." She said, "You must think I'm fucking crazy if yeah. you think I'm turning the AC on yeah. for you." I'm not wasting that on you. Who do you think I am? Like, yeah. She, and then she was said something along the lines of like, "You really need to go see a therapist because you're fucking yeah, you're, crazy. You're fucking crazy. I, I bet like, you think I'm I was fucking like, crazy." Mom, I'm seven. I'm playing with my Dalai Lama. Why are you? Yeah. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Right. Let me go in the grocery store with you. She's yeah. like, "No, I'm no, meeting I'm... my boyfriend Eric in there." Yeah. And I was like, "Boyfriend? What about dad?" And she was like, <laughs> "She was like, we'll talk about it when we get home, and we right. never talked about right. it." Right. But she'd leave at like all hours of the night. Right. <laughs> yeah, so seat belts are overrated. Are overrated? I think so too. I gotta be honest. Just kidding. My mom, my mom didn't have a boyfriend. It was a made up story. Well, it didn't lock me in a hot car. Come on. But she did have a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, mom. Um, Gavin, what do you, 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 what are you listening to? Okay, well. I know a couple weeks ago. Uh, I know a couple weeks ago. I did recommend Uh-oh. a Foo Fighters song. Uh-oh. I'm doing it again. We need to talk about this because you posted. Well, on a, on a separate account. On separate a from separate me. account that I won't disclose. Uh, that you're a. That I was a closeted Foo Fighters fan for a long time. Before that, you said that you wanted to admit you're a Stomp Rock fan. Oh yeah. And I said I think this has been known because yeah. if you're a big fan of the Black Keys. It, and Arctic Monkeys, you're yeah. a Stomp Rock fan. And well, Jack Queens White. Queens of the Stone Age. And Jack White. Ugh, Queens, Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, this song. Uh, Barf. Well, I guess I, I could recommend this one. It's just that, like. <laughs> I guess. I guess I could recommend this one. It's just that the lyrics are, like, really, like. Racist. One of the lyrics says. Really racist. I hypnotize you, ignore, then defy you. I blow my load all over <laughs> the status quo. Here we go. This is Foo Fighters? No, this is uh, Queens of the Stone Age. Ooh, so, big yikes on Not that sure one. I want to recommend that particular song but it's got a very stomp heavy kind of like feel to it i'll play it to you afterwards but what would you describe stomp rock to somebody who doesn't know what that is whoa <laughs> well <Whoa>, black <laughs> betty <laughs> so like, whoa like mumford and sons <laughs> no like no not mumford and sons Mumford and Sons. that's like folk stomp, stomp. yeah you, know, oh. you can go do that <laughs> stomp folk but i'm talking like stomp rock right like boom Simple, yeah, very driving easy, yeah. rhythms, yeah, and I can't, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like that video of uh, have you seen that video of like uh, Larry David introducing Ariana Grande? He goes, "Ladies and gentlemen, Ariak," <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> "Like it's a real thing." <laughs> okay, I need to look that up. Um. I was going to say, Royal Blood is kind of stomp rocky. Yeah. Some of their songs. Yeah, some of their stuff. Uh, let me. Uh, You're going to look it up? Or? Yeah. Uh, oh, that's funny. Oh. <laughs> oh Here we go. It. I can't bring that up. Ladies and gentlemen, Ariara. <laughs> Wait, play it again. Let me watch it. Oh, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Ariara. <laughs> <laughs> and even she's like laughing about it. I, 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 would, I would love to. I mean, that's like such a curb your enthusiasm moment. And I would love to say he did that on purpose, but the fact that he was like, <laughs> it, he definitely it, practiced it. He, that was for sure real. That's so funny. So, anyway, I've never so seen I'm recommending that this week. Uh, Ariana. I, Ariana. Ariana. I'm recommending Walk by the Foo Fighters. There you go. This song was stuck in my goddamn head all weekend. Uh-oh. I played it probably 15 times like Saturday night. <coughs> I just completely dried out right Long there. Long COVID, huh? Yeah. Um, anyway. Anyway. I really like this song. Uh, it, it's really good. Learning to walk again. Oh, I that believe song. I waited long enough. Which album is that off of? Began. Um, Wasting Light, 2011. Okay, that was a newer album. Uh, yeah, I knew that. I think I had this on CD. To be honest with you, <coughs> what happened to it? I don't know. We our family had it on CD for sure, though. I don't remember. Better figure that out. Anyway. Anyway, so this week, 
So I really like the Foo Fighters. So I went back to them again. Oh yeah. So so you, you admitted to being a stomp rock fan, yeah. and then you're like, I'm also a raging, raging Foo, Foo Fighters, Fighters fan. Yeah. Which I found interesting because I don't even know that I knew you liked the Foo Fighters until recently. I it had, like my dad, and my mom had played Foo Fighters for a long time. Okay. And like Casey, kind of surprises me a little bit. Casey like played it a lot too because they're like they're they're like Dave, bro, that guy oh, was in right. Nirvana. That's but, classic rock. Right. Foo Fighters is a weird. Not like new Foo Fighters stuff, but right. more like Everlong. You know, like <laughs> Foo Fighters kind of like works for everybody you know what i mean yeah, like the people who are like you know like oh i only listen to like these five bands yeah. you've never ever even heard of you have, like, like the, foo fighters yeah or you have the bar drunks the simple people like foo fighters yeah. the blue collar people blue collar weddings everybody yeah. loves foo fighters like it's like i and i do really feel that way because yeah. i love foo fighters yeah and they're i mean I always it's have. really it's it's there's no argument with that like they make good music. There no yeah. one's gonna be like this. This is a shitty ass band. No one listens to this. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I mean, like even if you're like, you know, you don't really like it. There's yeah. probably still a song. There's that probably like. a song that yeah, you like. Exactly. Or that you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's just it transcends uh, different styles too. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people just. I could probably put on Foo Fighters and no one would realize that it's Foo Fighters too. You know? Right. Because it just sounds like it is generic rock, but like yeah. it's still good generic rock. Good generic rock. It's not like the bad kind. Like Black Keys drop out boogie. Drop out boogie. Drop out boogie. Yeah, I don't I will never touch that. Um okay. So, so, now, so now that we're off of you finally. Jesus yeah. Christ. About time. About time. My mine's a weird one for a lot of different reasons. It's it's a out of left field suggestion, kinda. Um, I think I saw, yeah. Anyway, um, but it wasn't just also, you. I saw posted this. Oh, really? Yeah. Who are they? Just no, I think it was so. Stereo Gun posted it. Like, yeah, posted the video they did. It. Okay. That's where I found out about okay. it. So it's a video music suggestion. Now I'm sure you can probably. I'm sure like, so let me say what it is, and then I'll say what it's gonna say. But what it is, it is the Fred again, Tiny Desk concert from NPR. And like I said, like I was going to say, I'm sure you can probably listen to this. I'm sure NPR like puts it out f- like that you can l- actually just listen to without watching it, like on Spotify and stuff. But I really do suggest watching it because I don't know how much you know about Fred again, but I found out. Found no, out I about have never heard of Fred, Fred again. Fred again. Dot, dot. Fred again has been around making music for a long time, electronic music. Like specifically, like uh, yeah. Kind of. Like, whenever, I, whenever I, he's four hundred seventy third in the world, in in on Spotify. In Apex terms of, Twin. Yeah, no, Fred, Fred again. again. So never and that's because I had never heard of I. So I actually found out that I did know of him a long, long time ago when I was like in my dubstep Skrillex phase. Mm-hmm. Now that's funny because Skrillex You're recently right back in it. Right, Skrillex recently, uh, just like kind of like came back onto the scene again and was like, hey, I'm coming out with these albums. And like, I have been living with this Fred again guy and this guy. Um, oh my God, what is it? Fortet. He's been living with these two other electronic musicians who have been around for a while. Apex Twin. Are exactly Apex Twin, and aren't as popular as Skrillex is or was or whatever you want to say. And so like he kind of like even though they were popular and people knew about them, they just weren't like Skrillex level. But now that Skrillex is like, I'm these albums were. You know, help made with them and yeah. all these songs. Like, they're featured on it. Yeah, all these songs are they're featured on all of them. And then like, he did like a couple like random pop up shows in New York with like with Fortet and Fred again. And then they sold out Madison Square Garden. And all three of them played recently, which was like such a cool thing to watch. I watched some clips of it and stuff. But they're just like doing electronic music and having fun with it. Now I, I think people have different opinions on electronic music and stuff, but. I've always loved it. It's always had a soft spot in my heart. And like like you were kind of saying, I was kind of out of it for a long time and then like slowly got back into it with like stuff like Portishead and listening to older stuff. But then like I never suggested the Skrillex album, but I, I really wanted to because I loved I thought it was great. And kind of started listening to Fortet and Fred again a little bit from that. It wasn't like anything that I like wanted to keep listening to just because like for me, it's not something I want to listen to all the time, just right. personally. And so, coming to this Tiny Desk concert, I don't really watch the Tiny Desk concerts ever. The only one I've ever watched all the way through was the Turnstile one. I watched the Anderson Pac one. 
Okay. I mean, I know people love them. Like, it's like, you know, like. Yeah. It's really it's, interesting. It's a huge following and people love yeah. them. And like, yeah. I, I think it's a really cool concept. I yeah. just like half the time don't really yeah. care for many of the artists, which is fine. And I didn't think I would care about this. And then, like you said, I'm scrolling Instagram. And then I see Stereo Gum posts that Fred again just, or NPR just released their Tiny Desk concert with Fred again. Yeah. And I started playing it. And he, at first, I thought he was doing pen yeah, me too. beats on the table. And I was like, really? Yeah. But he wasn't. He was just doing beats with his hand. And so I keep watching because I'm like, to why like is layer he? it. Yeah. I was like, why is he doing pen taps? And it's because he's doing live sampling. Right. And then he, and then what like really, pulled out, he pulled out like a violin. Right. Bow. What really got me is after he did that and it started looping, I was like, okay, that's cool. Mm. He walks over to a vibraphone. Mm. No, I'm a percussionist. I was a percussionist. I played the vibraphone. And he did something he plays that, with vibrators. Right. All the time. He did something that I knew about yeah. back then because of one of our band teachers telling me that you can do this, but he took a violin bow or a viola bow or whatever. And what you a do bow is for a, a stringed instrument. A bow and arrow. Yeah. And what a boner. what you do, a vibraphone is like a marimba or glockenspiel, bell kit, whatever you want to call it. You know, whatever makes you picture it in your head. It's a xylophone. It's like a metal xylophone. Yeah, if you know it's, it's a metal xylophone, but it has a pedal like a piano, so you can let the notes ring, ring out. It, yeah. And so what he did is he pressed down the pedal, and then what you can do is on like a, the edge of the vibraphone note, or you key. key key. Thank you. He takes the bow and just like like you would with a violin string, and glides it along the edge of it, and it makes it ring out. And this really cool, uh, kind of like. Uh, Oh, I just had the word and I lost it. But like, kind of like spooky, you know, yeah. Halloween. Like yeah. they use it in like Halloween yeah. scores and stuff. Right. But he did that, and then he started playing, like the vibraphone and stuff. And he was like playing well, and I was like, "What is this? Like this electronic musician? Does he do live instrument stuff?" And so I watched it without knowing anything, and it's and it was amazing. He he's playing the piano, he's singing, which he doesn't do. And he's doing like it's all live sampling. So mm-hmm. he's like sampling the piano, and then he's also like taking clips and has like a screen up in the background, and he's like showing the clips he's sampling, like as he's like sample yeah. like, playing them. Yeah. And then he walks over to the he has a marimba and a xyl or and a vibraphone, and he plays. If you do you know what four mallet like? Yeah. He plays with four mallets yeah. on the it's marimba like held between your, which is like ears. crazy because like. That's a lot of talent. I, I probably can't do it anymore. I used to be able to, not very well. But for this like electronic musician to just walk up and play it well and he's like doing crescendos like perfectly. He's on time. He was doing this one thing where I thought he was off time, but he was like purposely off time to like go and sample a piano on time. And he's just like uh, it blew me away and like the whole thing is so amazing because it's like I ended up reading up about it in their description and it was like he he's an electronic musician like that's what he does but like he's back, weird as fuck he's freaking weird but back in the day he like grew up playing instruments and was like next door neighbors with like Brian Eno and like worked with Brian Eno and stuff and so like he knew he instruments destined. because of that so he knew how to play the marimba right. and all that stuff and so like he just like put together this like live sample you know, song yeah live sample thing with all these instruments he was playing and it was fucking awesome because i feel like electronic music gets a bad rap even though it kind of doesn't anymore because i mean it's still from some people who are like you just go up and you press a button and you play the music and which is a lot of times what does happen but for a electronic artist to show that he can play instruments and sample it all he looks live. Like a very average guy too. Like I yeah. was like, who the fuck is this? Like, right? There's nothing like special about uh-huh. him. He looks like a totally average guy, he which does? is it, like does not stand out. Like he could probably blend into any crowd. Like, right. He's a very plain looking guy. But he's so good. It, 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 it was, was it, it blew bizarre. me away. I was like, so I they would, just had this guy on the yeah. desk. <laughs> I right. I not, no, seriously. I was like, oh, who's this? And they probably wouldn't have if that Skrillex thing didn't come out, yeah, which is true. like sad that that wouldn't have happened but also yeah. cool of skrillex to be like look at these fucking yeah, awesome these guys, guys. Yeah. yeah i won't do it maybe him right really gavin really recommend you watching i almost sent it to you last night but i was like i'm going to talk about it a lot today i really would recommend for you to watch it because 
if like don't have any preconceived notions of electronic music in your head. No, because I mean, it's I like watched that. I watched it's like so the first good. like thirty seconds. So it's like, it's so good, and I, I, I was gonna like screen record and post a clip on my story just because I was like, this is fucking crazy. Go watch it, and then he like posted the part that I wanted to show, which was him playing the, four mallet, this four mallet uh, rhythm, and then he was like switching. The, it was. Crazy, so cool, but yeah, go watch that. Fred again, Tiny Desk Concert on NPR. Fucking awesome. Um, I hope he does more stuff like that. I don't know if he will, but it was really cool. And it deserves a shit ton of views, and it's number 15 on trending. That's so loud. Uh, yeah, let's get the fuck out of here, man. Let's get the fuck out of here, Mark Marin. Why is it, why is it so loud? Is it loud to you, too? Yeah. I feel like I'm hearing it in the room. Well, everybody, thanks uh, for listening too to the- quiet. Well, everybody, right. thanks for listening to the Tyso Kinds podcast episode 110. We're looking forward to the next episode. Hopefully you enjoy this episode. Here us talk about Dalai Lamas and stuff like that. Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton, Dolly Lamas. Polly Darton. And, uh, Probably Darton. Yeah. Um, keep watching, keep sharing, keep liking, keep subscribing, keep rating, and keep following. Uh, yeah, we uh, we got great stuff in store in the future. Can't yeah. wait for you to come along. I was going to say, there's only a couple more episodes that will be recorded in, in this year. In year. It won't look any different when we change back to my, my parents' house in the basement because it'll be the same set, but just it was interesting i was thinking about that before recording i was like huh there's only like maybe four more episodes yeah. honestly it might be four i think it's yeah. exactly four after yeah. this one crazy times we live in folks the vultures are waiting to pick your bones